part of how our journey evolves. This is going to be a bit touchy. Um, so from Swaggles, it became Swapaholic. So yeah, changed the name to Swapaholic and we it was still a pop-up event. So we were organizing events um, every other month or even like almost every month. And it was fun, it was intense. So organizing like a one swap, it's like our fashion show. We, it would take us one month and two weeks, I would say, or like the most is one month for us to prepare everything. Like, you know, the planning for marketing. To cut the story short, um, I stepped down as the managing director for Swapaholic of Swapaholic um, Mar I mean April so it came one full circle I started the very first clothes swap with Fashion Revolution and I also ended the pop-up events as a pop-up events during Fashion Revolution and I remember it was on the 28th of April 2018 um, that was my last event and it was very emotional for me um, to see the volunteers at the same time, the community, because I, after stepping down, I didn't know what to do at the same time. I know that I still would want to do this, but I'm not sure how. So after that, it just created a lot of confusion and I was, I was a a bit lost at that moment at the same time heartbroken because I've really worked so hard for all the things that I was doing and all of a sudden um, I was no longer a part of it and I was not doing it I was I was I was just like it at that time I used that also to reflect of what just happened at the same time the lessons that I've learned um, from the swap not just the business aspect of it, but the whole movement of like, how would I want to move forward from here? And I was like thinking, and I was having lunch with a good friend, with one of my best friends. And it was so funny because it was in Liang Court where we're eating, there was a vacant space. And I was just like, you know, blurting out. I was just, you know what? It could be crazy if we have a permanent shop where everyone can swap anytime they want they don't have to wait for an event and knowing the whole lifestyle of singapore everyone is traveling at some point either for work or for leisure so not everyone would always be present um for a specific event so that was the whole idea and we incorporated a lot of concepts as well in the store. And then Laura, who was, um, I was talking that time, she was like, yeah, just message the person that you're in contact or that you, your contact in the young court and see if they're open. And that right away, I just texted the marketing guy who was like, hey, we have this idea. Would you be open? And he straight away replied was like, send us your um, pitch and we can discuss. And I was like, oh, so excited. And finally, uh, I saw the light. And um, um, it makes me excited again, even if I was still healing or I was still confused. But it gives me that direction, the conviction. Because again, even if I was not doing it inside me, the conviction of doing the swap was still there because I really believed in the movement at the same, because of the experience that I had and, and, the, and how I see it is really creating the community and the engagement that we long for, um, I would say, because I think the transactional relationship that we had with fashion is something that would not work anymore. We would want to have more than us paying for the clothes. We need to have that connection and interaction with everyone. And also with all the events that we had, it was really forging friendship hearing a lot of beautiful stories of how they have realized how swapping empowered them at the same time created um 
intentional relationship, it just fueled me to do it more. So message him and then he's like, okay, we're interested. Um, send us the pitch. And then right away I messaged Jessica, who is still part of our team. I went I went home and I was like trying to jot down. I was like, and we we went over the board. Like whatever concept that we can think of that is visible in one space. We were thinking coffee shop, we were thinking book swapping, we were thinking the clothes swap and the workshops. So it, it was the idea was like one stop shop and everything that is about sustainability, everything that is about circular fashion, everything that is about raising awareness of empowering people to make a smarter decision in their purchase or you know the relationship that we have with clothes so after a few days um we sent it to um leon court like after three days or four days um i was having lunch it was like the break for the, uh, during the conference i was in in copenhagen which thanks to my friends who um organized that and made it happen and then i got an email and it says like hey ray we got the green light, you can start doing your concept store on June. And it was mid-May. So I was like, shit, we don't have enough time to do this. Plus, I had zero. Like, I had no inventory, I had no rack, clothes racks, anything. Like, I was starting from zero and I was like, oops did not agree um <laughs> but like, yeah so it was like uh, what what should i be doing and i don't have money like where will i get the funding for the money i was like okay we had experience of crowdfunding we had somehow the community um we had built the network as well so i messaged nadia who is behind the camera i was like nadia um when i come back let's film the crowdfunding um campaign so after like you know just um coming back from copenhagen uh, we straight away shoot it in the young court which is like an empty space by the way the initial place that i was pitching in the place that i was pitching in um in the mall was way bigger than what they gave us and i was a bit like oh they don't trust the concept um, that's why they give us a smaller space but it worked out so well again you think what you ask for is what you need? No. Sometimes it needs to be just enough for the capacity that you have in that very moment. So, yeah, so it was very fast because it was mid-May and I asked them like, hey, I don't think we were, we're gonna be, um, we're able to fulfill or we, we will meet the deadlines of us having the whole concept store ready by June. So we pushed it to July. So we immediately, you know, did the crowdfunding. Fashion remains still as the second most polluting industry after oil. And then now we're a bit realistic of like the goals that we have. And another friend was really was suggesting of like, hey, it would be better if you actually use Indiegogo because if even if you don't hit the target, you will still get the money. And I was like, no, it was it's all or nothing. If you don't get the money, then um, that's it. So we, we use Kickstarter because Kickstarter is all or nothing um, platform. So we did that and uh, we published the crowdfunding and we are so fortunate to, um, yeah, to, to meet the target in, in within three weeks because the campaign was like three, uh, one month. And then while we're doing the crowdfunding, simultaneously we were trying to prepare the whole space and it's just like, oh my god, like now that I am recalling everything that had happened, it's just like super overwhelming because even if we had zero, we had nothing when we were starting. So I was like contacting all my friends, I was like, hey, do you have like clothes that you're no longer using that uh, or if you have friends, so they gave us clothes at the same time there was like it was a friend of Chu who is now the head of Fashion Revolution Singapore. There's one lady who was closing her shop and she has a lot of hangers. So she, she gave it to us, how crazy. And then also the racks, um, same thing. A lot of just people like good people, like honestly, I can never complain. I'm, I'm, we're just so lucky to be surrounded by loving and supportive people. And, and I was like, the place was a bit, um, we need paint. And then I asked um, 
Because I remember one specific, one specific event that I attended two years back, I met these guys who are doing some paints and they changed their name so I cannot um, find them on um, online. And then I asked Stephanie, who is the founder of Green is the New Black, was like, Steph, these, do you have contacts of these guys? And he, uh, she straight away gave it to me and then I contacted them the next day we had meeting Starbucks in Liang Court and I showed them the place, tell them the vision and they was like, sure, we'll give you the paint and you will be, um, we can be your partner. I was like, yes. And then the next part was like, the whole concept was like, we would want it to be more chill and not very retail, retail-y um, vibes. So we want it like to have furniture and more chill vibes. And then the first initial idea, which was really bad, um, was to collect different furnitures from people who are trying to throw it away or selling it for cheap. And we had that for about two days. So we were collecting different furniture and we realized that like, wow, this is yes, very much in line of what we do, but at the same time, very expensive because we have to um, hire logistics or um, someone to help us carry or like transport that to Liang Court and every and it was all in different places it didn't it did not work so I was like we need to have someone who owns a furniture shop and would be happy to give us or lend us um, furniture and then I contacted another friend I was like hey Hoi Ran which is now she's based in in Thailand I was asking her if she knows someone from Hok Shong it's actually like the upcycled furniture she's like no I don't know anyone from there but I know this lady she owns a furniture shop which is very funny because her shop the showroom that she has is just actually in a long river valley super near to Liang Court so it was a weekend and then on Monday I met her we did not even discuss about what I would want we just talked about like you know the vision of the company of what we're, of what we're trying to do at the same time she shared her story about blah 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 and then I was like I was scared I was like oh my god she didn't even ask me what we would want what's like the plan and then at the end of the conversation, I was like, message me of what she, of what you want, and then we will see um, if we can provide. And I was like, oh my God, thank God. So I give her the list of the things that we have, and they were so sweet. They even like helped us plan out, because for us, it was just like anything comes. Like whatever that will be given to us, we will make the most out of it. But they were so sweet because they help us conceptualize the whole store and like where we're gonna put the racks and where we're gonna put the furniture so yeah and then one ambitious goal also was to have a cafe and then that was a different story because the mall was like requesting us different permits because if it's if it's f and b and it's different from what we do so um a good friend of mine also linked me to the owner of sarnies and then invited him to the place. Same thing, what I did, it was empty. It was all dirt, was there. And telling him like, yeah, this is the concept. And I hope we were gonna make like, you know, um, coffee for our customers to make it more like, you know, a chill vibe, blah, blah, blah. And then he was like, he was very number person and, he, and good thing that he helped us figure that out. He was like, okay, so if this is the amount of people, um, blah, 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 we cannot provide you a barista because it's gonna be a, a lot of cost. So what we can do is we can lend you the machine and then we can train you on how to make coffee. And that was like, perfect idea. That's gonna be another skill for us to learn. So yeah, it all just came all together. And then July 28th, we had our first opening and it was just so much relief for me and for the whole team that we're finally open, that we're finally um, doing it. And yeah, and it, it, that's where all it is now, that what Fashion Pulpit is now, though we have moved to um, a new location, which is at Marina One, a must visit place, I would say, um, because Liang Court have to be um, demolished, I guess, or renovated because I guess it's one of the oldest malls in Singapore. So yeah, so that's the whole story. Um, I think a summary because I've, I've spared you the details and some of the dramas. Um, yeah, so 
again, when we all, when we started, it was really the question of how can I live a meaningful and impactful life or how can I spend the life that I would want to see? That was the initial question and that's where it all started. But now it's bigger than that. It's bigger than me. It's bigger than the whole team of the fashion pulpit because we owe it to the people, to the community who really supported us since day one in a way that they know how they can lend a hand or resources or even just talking about it and encouraging their friends to swap or not even that, um, just talking about how we need to transform the whole system of the fashion industry for it to be more responsible and for it to be a force for good. So we are working hard and doing this and standing even if it's not easy i will tell you it's not easy to run a social enterprise that came from the need to provide a solution for everyone to be part of and especially in an industry where cons where consumption is the main driver to make the industry thrive so now that we're trying i would say trying to rewrite it with the help of everyone yeah so that has been the goal and we will keep pushing because again it's not just because of us but it's for the whole greater good of everyone and for the whole community and yes that's pretty much it i've talked so much for this episode but again if you would want to hear more stories or whatever you would want to learn from us from this two years experience that we had or even before because yeah we had that experience funny one and anything that you would want to learn just let us know or um we will make it happen and thanks again for tuning in and spending time with me and i will see you next time Fashion is such a powerful industry because it somehow dictates what is pretty and what's not, what's the color trend or what's good for you. So why not make we use that power to make it a force for